A man with a stopwatch yells orders to the crew as they unlock vaults and pile money into the truck sitting at the loading dock. The robbers are heavily armed. They've locked the Securitas staff in metal cages as they expertly maneuver their way through the building. Piles and piles of cash are loaded into the getaway vehicle. The Securitas Depot heist is underway. It'll be the largest cash robbery in British history. But who is the mastermind behind it? The man with the stopwatch calls out timing and coordinates the movements of the robbers. Then, as suddenly as the heist is started, it's over. The robbers leave the facility without tripping a single alarm or alerting the authorities in any way. As they drive away, the man with the stopwatch around his neck removes his mask and smiles. It's UFC fighter Lee Murray. He's stolen over 53 million pounds. Lee Murray was an MMA fighter who had the chance to make it big in the UFC. But how did this once famous fighter end up carrying out the biggest bank heist in British history? Why did he do it? These questions and more will be answered, but first let's take a look at what created the fighter turned bank robber Lee Murray in the first place. Murray grew up in Woolwich, Southeast London. At an early age, he joined a gang called the Barney Boys, named after the Barnfield Estate housing projects they lived in. Murray was incarcerated as a juvenile at the Feltham Young Offender Institution for selling marijuana and crack cocaine. It was in his rough early years that he learned how to fight, not because he wanted to, but because he had to in order to survive. Lee Murray was known as a ferocious puncher. In fact, Robbie Lawler, a former UFC welterweight champion, remembers Murray during their time training at Peacock's boxing gym together. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, Lawler said Murray had world-class punching power. He would hit the mitts and it would sound like gunfire. Murray fought in several smaller promotional fights before receiving a contract with the UFC. His record upon entering the Ultimate Fighting Championship was 8-2-1. Although Lee Murray only ended up competing in one UFC fight, he did not disappoint. Murray entered the arena to a screaming electric guitar playing over the loudspeakers and wearing a Hannibal Lecter mask. In his one and only UFC appearance, Murray won against Jorge Rivera in the first round using a triangle choke armbar. However, he never got to fight in a UFC match again. There were complications with his United States visa because of an ongoing criminal investigation against him in Britain. The crime that Murray was being tried for was a vicious assault during a road rage incident. Lee Murray continued to fight in different MMA promotional events such as Cage Rage, but his fighting career came to an end when he was stabbed multiple times in a bar fight. This event happened at a birthday party for TV actress Lauren Pope at a bar called Funky Buddha. Murray stated that that fight broke out when one of his friends got into an altercation with another group of men. Murray tried to step in and help his friend who was being pummeled by six other guys. The chaos escalated when one of the attackers pulled a knife and stabbed Murray in the head. Murray recalls thinking the stab was actually a punch, so he wiped the blood from his face and kept on fighting. Then he got stabbed again and again, not noticing until the fight came to an end. Murray looked down at his chest to see the blood literally shooting out of it. The irony is that this was not the first time Murray had encountered a knife at Funky Buddha. A week before the almost fatal stabbing, Murray got into a fight with another gentleman at the bar who pulled a knife and slashed off one of Murray's nipples. You would think that it'd be enough to keep Murray away from the bar for a bit, but it turns out it wasn't. These two stabbing events put an end to Murray's traditional MMA career. He would not be able to enter the ring for many months, and even when his wounds did heal, there was most likely permanent damage that would prevent him from fighting again. His days of mixed martial arts were over. Over the course of the next year, Murray and others in his gang planned a bank heist. It would be the largest robbery in British history. On February 21, 2006, Murray led his gang of robbers on a job that stole 53,116,760 British pounds from the Securitas Depot. The setup for the crime was done weeks in advance. Murray had one of the members of the gang named Amir Heisenaj interviewed to work in the night shift at the Securitas Depot. A few months before the heist, Heisenaj sat down for a 10-minute interview. Heisenaj was hired on the spot for $11 an hour. The inside man wore a camera on his belt buckle and recorded all the goings-on inside the holding facility. With this information, Murray and his accomplices made a plan on how to best steal the money within the walls of the vault. The heist started not at the depot itself, but on a backcountry road leading to the house of Mr. Colin Dixon. Dixon was a high-level manager at the depot and had security access to all the parts of the facility Murray needed to get into. On February 21st, Murray and one of his other robbers dressed up in fake police uniforms and outfitted a car with blue flashing lights to disguise it as an unmarked police car. Dixon pulled over his car. Two uniformed men approached the driver's side window. One of the phony officers flashed a fake badge and ordered Dixon to step out of the vehicle. At the exact same time, a second group of kidnappers were sent to Dixon's house to collect his wife and son. The family was transposed to Eldoran Farm and threatened at gunpoint to either cooperate or die. 
The family, along with the armed robbers, were loaded into the back of a large transport truck and drove to the Securitas Depot. Murray and his gang of robbers reached the depot just after midnight on February 22nd. The truck was accompanied by the fake police car that pulled Dixon over the previous evening. Dixon was brought to the door of the facility accompanied by a man dressed in a fake police uniform. Dixon and the robber were buzzed in. As they entered the facility, the fake police officer overpowered the security guard and buzzed in the rest of the gang. They entered the facility wearing masks and brandishing machine guns, shotguns, and pistols. As the robbers made their way through the facility with their high-powered weapons, Dixon ordered the workers of the graveyard shift to think of their families and surrender willingly. Luckily for the robbers, none of the workers tripped any of the alarms, which meant that they would not be disturbed by the authorities that night. Fourteen people were taken by the robbers, tied up, and secured in metal cages for money transport as the gang plundered the depot. Once all the workers were rounded up, Murray forced Dixon to shut down the security system completely and hand over the keys to the vault. At this point, the truck that the robbers had ridden to the depot pulled up to the loading dock. The team of robbers loaded bags of cash into the truck as the man with the stopwatch, who was later identified as Lee Murray, yelled timing and orders. It was clear that this was a well-thought-out heist that took time to plan and coordinate. The robbery went off without a hitch. No one was physically injured, and not a single shot was fired. The alarms remained off for the entirety of the robbery. Once the truck was loaded up with over 53 million pounds worth of banknotes, the gang left. The workers and the Dixon family were kept locked in the money cages. Around 3 a.m., Dixon's son was able to squeeze through the bars of the cage he was being held in and call police. But at that point, it was too late. Murray and his gang of robbers were long gone. No one had any idea who they were or where they went. The police immediately set out to find the criminals, offering massive rewards to anyone who had information that would lead to the arrest of the robbers. The large reward for information along with missteps from members of the gang led to arrests only days after the robbery. After 10 days, five people were charged and millions of pounds were recovered. Later in the investigation, a makeup artist who had made prosthetic masks for the robbers turned on the gang and testified against them. It was later reported that the gang put a bounty on her head for £7 million to stop her from leaking any more information to the police. Things were unraveling quickly, but the main piece of evidence that helped the police track down the robbers came from none other than Lee Murray himself. Days before the bank heist, Murray crashed his bright yellow Ferrari. After the accident, Murray left his cell phone in the car. On it was a recording of him talking about the robbery with other members of the gang. Now the police knew who the mastermind behind the Securitas Depot heist was. Unfortunately for the cops, Murray was already one step ahead of them. When members of the gang started being picked up by police, Murray fled to Morocco. Once in Morocco, Murray was protected from British authorities because there was no extradition treaty between the countries at the time. Murray's father had been born there, which granted Lee Murray automatic citizenship. Once safely in Morocco, Murray began living a life of luxury. He bought a $1 million mansion and then dumped hundreds of thousands of dollars into renovating it. He had a massive mural painted on one of the walls commemorating his only fight in the UFC. Murray drove around in a gold Mercedes-Benz and installed a multi-level, fully equipped gym in his mansion. He also commissioned bronze and gold statues of himself that he used as decorations around the house. This extravagant lifestyle didn't come without its pitfalls. The British and Moroccan authorities began working closely together to keep surveillance on Murray at all times. Eventually, Moroccan police arrested Murray on drug charges. Then, in 2009, while in jail, British authorities became involved in the case. Murray knew he was in trouble. He attempted to escape prison using small saws that were smuggled inside a plate of biscuits. The escape failed. A year later, Lee Murray was charged and convicted for his part in the Securitas Depot heist. He was sentenced to 10 years in jail, which was eventually extended to 25 years to be served in a Moroccan prison. Other members of the gang who made it to Morocco were sent back to Britain to serve their time there. Lee Murray's story is unlike any other. He had a rough childhood being raised in a gang-run neighborhood where he learned to fight or die. He spent time in jail as a juvenile because of his affiliation with the Barney Boys and his job as a drug runner. Then he used his fighting skills to earn notoriety. He fought hard and made it all the way to the UFC, living the life of a playboy along the way. When everything came crashing down after being stabbed numerous times ending his fighting career, Murray went back to what he knew from his childhood, crime. He was able to pull off the largest bank heist in British history, where he and his accomplices stole £53,116,760. Unfortunately for Lee Murray, he eventually got caught and is now serving his 25-year sentence in a Moroccan jail. Now check out Largest US Cash Heist Ever, How They Pulled Off Insane Armored Truck Robbery, or watch Insane Way Bank Robbers Executed Perfect Bank Heist Stole $20 Million.